All right, let's look at this example of a truss. Pretty small truss, uh, so you may maybe not thinking about doing method of sections, but uh, you know the the problem kind of shows you exactly where you need to cut it. Uh, if you want to find the force in members G, E, G, C, and B, C uh, of the truss shown, indicate whether they're in tension or compression. Uh, method of sections would be a good method. All right, now usually I would look at the whole free body diagram and I would solve for a y a x and d y but I'm gonna be smart about this I'm gonna look ahead and I'm gonna to try to think about which half am I going to keep which half am I going to keep uh, I like to keep the simpler half uh, I don't know that has two unknowns this has one unknown but it does have some some I don't know which half would be easier uh, so I'm just gonna choose uh, you could choose either half. I'm going to choose this one right here. So thinking ahead, knowing that I'm going to keep the right half and I'm going to throw away the left half, I don't really care what AX and AY are. All right, I only care what DY is. How can I find DY? All right, I haven't cut it yet. I'm still looking at the whole free body diagram. But do you see that by looking at the whole free body diagram and summing the moments about A, AX goes straight through it, AY goes straight through it. Uh, let me sum up about a whole free body diagram. I've got 1200 acting perpendicular distance of 4 meters away, creating a negative moment. I've got 400 acting a perpendicular distance of 3 meters away, creating a also negative moment. And then I've got DY acting 12, creating a positive moment. If the sum of all those equals 0, I would get DY is... 900 newtons. dy is 900. And I'm going to stop there and I'm not even going to solve for ax and ay. Now I'm ready to cut it and look at the right half of it. So let me draw this. Let me cut it. And, and I like to kind of fill it in as if it's a solid object, right? I'm not worried about the forces inside E, D, E, C, and C, D. I'm only worried about the forces inside these that, I, that I've cut. Uh, so do you see that it's, it's kind of like we are cutting it, and when we cut it, we expose the force in GE, right? Here, uh, when we cut it, we expose the force in GC. Uh, Here, when we cut it, we expose the force in BC, right there. And I drew all those intentions. So, you know, you see how even though I'm kind of cutting it right here, and I could show that I'm cutting it right here. Um, generally, I don't show those, right? This is how I would draw it. I would just draw this force here, this force here, that force right there, right? These three forces, force GE, force GC, and force BC. And we know their directions because all these forces are two force members and they're either in compression or tension along their member, right, pin to pin, and I'm guessing tension. All right, now I still have this 400 Newton force on the right hand side. I still have 1200 Newtons on the right hand side and I still have 900 Newtons on the right hand side. All right, so let us uh, sum the forces in the X direction negative FBC. All right, why did I put negative here? Because it's to the left, right? I can't emphasize this enough, and, and maybe it's not clear, but these equilibrium equations that I'm about to write, they are defined by your axes. They are defined by left, right, up, down. They're defined by your axes. All right. All right, negative FBC, negative FGE, negative F, let's see, GC uh, is over 4, up 3, over 4, up 3. That would make that a 3, 4, 5. Uh, so this would be the 4 fifths component. Uh, and then 400 to the right. There we go. That one equation has three unknowns. I'm not going to touch that one uh, for a while. Some of the forces in the y direction. Let's see. FCG, the 3 fifths component, is going up. 1200 is going down, 900 is going up, set that equal to zero. There I can solve, right? One equation, one unknown. Uh, I would get positive 500. What does that mean? Positive means I guessed right. What did I guess? I guessed tension. Box that in. Box that in. Um, this is GC. 
see, I, I, I would plug that back in up there, but I still can't solve, use that equation. So let me sum my moments. You know, I really should kind of re-evaluate this. Instead of always summing the force in x first, always summing the force in y first, it might be a good idea to always t start with your moment equation because almost, you know, nine times out of ten, your moment equation, you can be strategic about it and you can pick a point that you sum the moments about that only has one unknown in it. And so anyway, some, sometimes you just might want to get used to starting with that one because it's always a one unknown, one equation that can kind of start you off in the right direction. But anyway, uh, sum me the moments. What uh, point do you want to sum the moments about? Um, I could sum moments about uh, that point, this point, this point, any point. I could even sum moments about this point up here if I wanted to, uh, to kind of eliminate some unknowns. Uh, I think maybe this point right here, which is point C, I think I'm going to sum the moments about point C. All right, let's sum the moments about C, as if C was my pivot point. 12,000 goes straight through it. FBC goes straight through it. FGC goes straight through it. Uh, FGE, so I'm summing the moments about C. FGE is acting, what is that height? Sorry, 3, and the base is 4. Uh, FGE is acting 3 away, creating a positive moment but that 400 is acting 3 away, creating a negative moment. And then this 900 is acting 4 away, creating a positive. Set that equal to 0, and I would get FGE is negative 800. What does that negative mean? It means that shows incorrectly. It was actually 800 newtons compression. Box that in. Do you need units, and you need to tell me compression or tension. Box that in. And then I'm ready to go back and plug this back in, but I'm going to go in backwards, remember, to an equation I've already written. Uh, it would make sense to plug that negative 800 backwards into that equation. So if I plug in negative 800, now be careful. This is negative 800 and another negative. This is 500 right here, and there's a, a minus out here, 4 fifths. Solve for FBC, and I would get FBC is positive 800. Positive means, I guessed correctly, positive means tension. There you go. So that wasn't too bad. I looked at the whole free body diagram, but I didn't sum the force in X and sum the force in Y. I just went straight ahead, whole free body diagram, sum the forces about A so that I could solve for DY because I was thinking ahead, already had decided I was going to use the right half. Uh, so the right half uh, and then sum the force in x, y, sum the moments. Um, if you have three uh, equations and three unknowns, that, you know, is, is probably a good sign. All right, that's probably a good sign. I have three equations, three unknowns. I could solve for all three of those. All right.